Hi everybody, back again with some more food, candy. Um, this time I'm just going to do a few um, kind of mini traditional uh, Japanese treats. Okay. So let's get started. And uh, so let's start with these. These are kompeto. So this is a, they come, it's traditional Japanese candy. Um, this is the lid. And they come in different packages and packaging, but this is just a small container of them. And they're just sugar candies. Um, they have this really kind of unique shape. They kind of look like asteroids -y. and textured like asteroids. So let's see what they taste like. Um, I'm going to try a blue one. And the texture's like a hard candy. They don't have any taste. Didn't bite it. Maybe the flavor is inside. Hmm. They're really crumbly when you bite them. I thought they were going to be a lot like a like a hard candy, but they're kind of like you know what they're like. They're like um sugar crystals. You ever eat those sugar crystal like um lollipops that are on a stick? They're like that. They're kind of crumbly. Um, but the taste, they don't taste like anything. It comes out of the history of when sugar was really rare and hard to find. Um, so it was considered a really special treat. Um, because, you know, sugar cane doesn't really grow in Japan, and, and so this is before sugar was readily available. So it was really highly prized. Um, so you can still find these, these traditional sweets, but they don't taste very good. Yes. So... These are pretty old school. And Ume is a um, fruit. Sometimes people translate to plum. Some people translate it to apricot. So there's the arrow. You push it, and it reveals a little hole. So through the hole, you can tap out. And look at them. They're tiny little balls. So let's try it. They're actually really good. So they kind of just dissolve. Um, but they're a little bit tangy. And they have a nice little kind of ume flavor. Um, but these look like maron, but they call them marons here, which are chestnuts. So I think they're going to be some kind of mini chestnut. Oh, immediately smells sweet. Oh, weird. <laughs> they're tablets. I was expecting a gummy or something. Look. They're like chestnut shaped tablets. Weird. They're stamped like chestnuts, which are really popular here in the fall and winter. Um, they're delicious. If you don't like them, you should try them. But here we go. Let's try one. Mmm. So the texture is like a sweet tart. So weird but definitely not tart. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like breakfast cereal candy. It tastes like, yeah, it has that toasted kind of like almost corn flavor. It tastes like Frosted Flakes. <laughs> frosted Flakes candy, if you can imagine what that is. That's what this, this is. So, maram, um, or chestnut candy, like this. Pretty cute. Tastes like cereal. Not very good. Usagi. Usagi just means rabbit. And mambo. I don't know what mambo means. <laughs> but pretty cute packaging. And inside are five sticks. Yeah. Look. It's like a shiny green stick. And then inside it's white. Weird. So I don't know what these are. I don't know if they're gum or what. It doesn't say. It just says mambo and usagi, which just means rabbit. So let's try the pink one. Whoa! It's plastic. It 
It's a plastic straw. And inside is a powder, like a sugary sweet powder, kind of like chalk. And when you bite it, and you, it's kind of cool. So you kind of gnaw on the plastic, and then the sweet candy stuff comes at the end. Weird. What else is this there? Chew on it, and the sugar stuff comes out. As far as flavor, there's not much flavor. Again, <laughs> I think these traditional Japanese old fashioned candies were just kind of sweet, like neri ame or um, what other ones did I try? They're just not that flavored. Let's try the green one just for posterity. Oops. Yeah, same thing. Boy, these traditional candies just aren't that tasty. Tsukombu. So tsukombu. Um, kombu is seaweed, and um, it's a it's it's usually used to make dashi. Uh, it's a big. Sh it floats in big sheets in the ocean, and um, they use it to make all kinds of savory things. But dashi is used like as a soup base in all kinds of. Um, Japanese soups, miso, yeah, stews. Um, this is a kind of, it's not really a sweet, it's it's always in the sweet section, but it's more of like a, it's really an in inside. Oh, this is a little bit different. This is different than I've seen it in the past. It's a little package of kombu, which is seaweed. The kind that I've seen before, it comes got this, and it comes in strips, almost like gum. And um, but this one I've never tried before. Whoa. <laughs> mm-hmm. It smells vinegary. So let's try it. Just green seaweed. It smells very strongly of vinegar. Mm. And it's very sour. But you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, here's a bigger square. I'll try that. Just don't smell it. Because if you smell it, you might be repulsed. <laughs> but it's got a little bit of resilience. Um, it's definitely vegetal. It tastes, uh, in terms of its its texture. It's a little bit kind of rubbery, but um, it's pickled. It's, it tastes like vinegar, but it's got a light sweetness. It's like, kind of like sushi. Sushi rice. It's like that. Kind of vinegary, but a little bit sweet and salty. Um, but a little goes a long way. So if you get some of this, I recommend just eating a small amount. And um, yeah, it's not bad. It's very unusual. <laughs> So, if you are in Japan, and you see this, it's a kombu, you know what it is. Interesting. It's a strip of whistle candies. Can you see that? So, back in the States or um, in your Asian market, you probably can find these. They're pretty common. But they're like a traditional, like, old-school Japanese candy, too. Usually you'll see them come in either individually wrapped like this, um, or they'll come in like a sheet, like a punch pack, um, grape flavored, um, ramune flavor, and in this case, I'm not sure what this flavor is going to be, but it's white and it has a hole in it. So it looks like a big cert, but this hole is really specific. So you can eat it, and this is a ramune flavor, so it tastes like a sweet tart, but there's a really cool trick. You can whistle with it. So what you do is you put it in the front of your mouth with the hole facing out like that. And then you blow. Whoa. That didn't work because it crumbled before I had a chance. Let me try again. <laughs> That's pretty piercing. That's a piercing whistle. But it's fun. 
So the trick is, when you put it in your mouth, is to seal off um, any leaks. So you can whistle on the inhale and the exhale. So, highly recommend those. Those are fun. Whistle candies. Okay, and my last little kind of... And for my last traditional Japanese trick... Oops, I already thought... I have our friend Lamine! Yay! So the marble, which seals the top. And the marble falls into this little spot. And then you drink it. But there's a proper way to drink it. On one side of the bottle, you'll see there's these two little indentations. Right there. On the other side, it doesn't have it. So this, these indentations need to be on the bottom. So when you drink it, those little dents hold the marble so in place. Otherwise, when you're drinking it, the marble goes back into the end and stops and prevents you from drinking the soda. So there's a little bit of a technique. Plastic off. And the top of the bottle. And there you can see where the marble is. This is two parts. So you take this little collar off. So now you have two pieces. Discard that. And you take this. This is a plunger. Then you put it on top of the marble, and then you push it. Whoa! I just made a mess. Excuse me. So that was kind of a debacle, like I showed you. Hopefully yours won't explode. Right. Marble at the bottom there. Make sure the two dents, the little eyes, are facing down, and you drink it like this. So that catches the marble, and it keeps it from going down the hole. And you drink it. The Lamine candies taste more like bubblegum or um, sweet tarts, but the soda itself, it just tastes more like 7-Up. It's good. So then once you finish it, you can see now, you can see the marble better. The marble is um, in the top of the bottle. So then you can untwist this. I think you untwist it. Oh, there. See? So you just untwist it in the opposite direction. Then uh, take that off, and then you can take out the marble. Um, and <laughs> seeing some of the traditional Japanese mini treats, um, yeah, it doesn't seem like they're that exciting, but they're fun, cute packaging, and um, you know, we won't know till you try, right? <coughs> Excuse me, that was gross. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, great seeing you guys, and um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.